W-E-A... W-E-A-F, New York. 8.30 p.m., B-U-L-O-V-A, Boulevard Watch Time. A pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon Time with Kirk Massey, Edna Stilwell, Jeanette, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and radio's red-headed ragamuffin, Richard Red Skelton. gentlemen, Avalon's will open your eyes to real cigarette value because they give you the perfect combination of highest quality plus outstanding money-saving economy. Avalon's cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. And be assured, three to five cents saved on every pack of cigarettes you smoke means something. It mounts up to many, many dollars in a surprisingly short time. And remember this, it's extra dollars that you would never have otherwise. Now a word of warning. Don't let Avalon's low cost fool you. Judging by the quality, you'd never guess they cost you less. Only the very choicest Turkish and domestic tobaccos go into union-made Avalon's, blended with rare skill to give you cigarette smoking enjoyment that is unsurpassed for smoothness, mildness, and mellow flavor. Truly, ladies and gentlemen, Avalon's are exceptional cigarettes. It will pay you well to give them a trial tonight. And now we come to the first trip of our Triple Alliance, our red-headed headline hunter and his headline hokum. Here he is, that cocky correspondent who concocts curious quips from the news quotes, that candid camera-eyed commentator creating corn from cross-current events, Red Skelton. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And now for the news. We start off this evening with news fashions for the men. Uh, men this fall are going to wear gay colors. <laughs> men, uh, the businessmen are going to wear red to match the books. <laughs> I bought a new suit the other day. I wanted one of those kind with stripes, you know, the kind all the big bankers are wearing. <laughs> well, I uh, went in one of those exclusive uh, clothing stores, you know, the kind when a customer walks in, the door automatically locks. Well, anyhow, they didn't have any uh, suits with stripes in them, so they just sold me a blue serge and gave me a piece of chalk. <laughs> the uh, Hollywood, California. Hedy Lamar drops her handkerchief on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> the streets are now closed for repair. <laughs> Here's some more news about Hollywood. An actor and an actress are reported to have been happily married for a week and a half. Someday they're going to carry that publicity stuff too far. <laughs> Political news. Philadelphia. A proposed presidential candidate for 1940 refuses to be considered for the election. He says, who wants the job? The president of the day is just a three-cent stamp of tomorrow. 
<laughs> oh, politics is great stuff, though. A farmer down in Kansas has gotten so many loans from the government that he can only milk his cows now with a political pull. <laughs> Ten explorers leave for the South Pole. Gee, they get the same effect by staying and going to a movie theater. <laughs> Boy, those movie theaters really have cooling systems. It's so cold in the theater next door to my house. Yesterday, someone opened the side door and 14 sparrows left for Florida. <laughs> I like those theaters. I go to a theater every day up to the house where I live. In fact, I have to. That's where we keep the butter. <laughs> a man 108 years old marries a woman 65. He'll probably have to bring Niagara Falls to see them. Chicago, Illinois, 300,000 people listened to Lawrence Tibbetts sing in the rain. I was down there the other night. While he was singing from the Barber of Seville, a bolt of lightning came along and gave me a close shave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that takes care of the news for tonight, so I think I'll stumble out and let lovely Jeanette trip in with, Oh, You Crazy Moon. Sing it pretty, Jeanette, but pretty... <laughs> now The Slice of Life, a short playlet about things that happen in everyday life. As the scene opens, we find a young couple at a college dance. Edna Stilwell plays the part of a beautiful co-ed. Red Skelton plays the part of something in a boy's size. Listen. Gee, I could dance with you like this forever. Don't you want to improve? <laughs> Tell me, Richard, why do you always stand in one place when you dance? Well, Why don't you move around? I want to save money. You want to save money? Yeah, I rented this tuxedo for the mile. <laughs> well, you look very well in it. Thanks. I certainly like those trousers. You do? Yeah. The first pair of pants I've seen with the knees in the back. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh, I'm sorry. Gee. Gee, you ought to be able to dance better than that. I heard the last week you won the jitterbug contest. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were a jitterbug. Neither did I until but somebody mistook my back pocket for an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> well, the music stopped playing. Shall we stop dancing? <laughs> yeah, step down. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go out on the porch. Here comes the campus Romeo. He thinks all the girls are nuts about him. Come on. I think he's wonderful. Yeah, what's he got that I can't get on the installment plan? <laughs> Wait, I want a meeting. Oh, all right. Gee. Hey, Roger. Edna, this is Roger Jones. Hello, darling. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, you two know each other? No, but why waste time? <laughs> 
Gee, you're a cute little dish. Ah, uh, come on and break it up, Roger. This ain't dish night. <laughs> Say, I like that dress you have on. Thanks. I got this dress at a bargain sale. And you know, it's a funny thing. Another girl wanted it, too. We both grabbed it at the same time. Yeah, and the half you got looks very well on you. <laughs> yes, sir, I really like that color. Thanks. I think the dress brings out my eyes. Yeah, mine, too. <laughs> What are you going to do now, Icky? Ask her for a date? Nah, I'm going to ask you for that buck you borrowed from me yesterday. Oh, uh, well, gee, I should... Didn't I pay that back yet? Well, I'll take care of it now. You don't have a checkbook, do you? Sure, right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a fountain pen? No, but you'll find the ink over there in the writing room. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Well, don't go away, Edna. I'll be right back. It'll only take a minute. Say, hey, what's a nice kid like you doing with a guy like that? Haven't you heard the rumor that's going around about him? Heard it? I started it. <laughs> hey, listen, why don't you ditch that guy and let you and me go to a nightclub, huh? Okay, but I promised Richard I'd let him drive me home. Shh, here he comes. Pretend we were talking about class. Right. So I said to the Well, professor, here you are, fellow. My personal check for a dollar. But do me a favor, will you? Don't cash it for a couple of weeks or I'm ruined. <laughs> Say, Edna, a gang is going to the nightclub. Would you like to go? Well, yes. Uh, Roger... I'll tell, let Richard drive me over in his car to the dormitory to get my coat. Yeah. Then I'll duck out the back way and meet you in the alley. Okay, it's a date. Come on, Edna. Okay, where's your car? This way, it's stacked up outside. <laughs> oh, there it is. Ain't that pretty? That's a 1912 Saxon. A Saxon? Yeah. Which end do you blow? <laughs> what a car. Has it got a radio? No, I can't afford a radio. Well, gee, I want to hear some music. Well, get in. Maybe we can pick up some gypsies. <laughs> Will you drive me over to the dormitory? I want to get my coat. Yeah, well, hold on. Here we go. Hey, have you got good brakes on this thing? Sure. All you got to do when you want to stop is press down on the front fender. Uh-oh. I think I've got a flat tire. Well, that makes us even. <laughs> If you only live a block from here, I'll drive down and fix the tire while you're getting your coat. I gotta get those brakes fixed. Well, here we are. I'll change the tire. Okay, I'll go in and get my coat. I'll be right out. Yeah. Maybe. Gee, I wish I had a new tube, but I guess I'll just have to blow up some bubble gum. <laughs> She's been in there three hours. What's she doing, making that coat? Hey, Edna. Edna. I'm going to sneak in no man's land and see what's keeping her. Boy, if anybody catches in me, me in here, my college days are over. Oh, boy, the door's unlocked. Just a minute, young man. What are you doing in here? Don't you know this building is for girls only? Yes, I do, but you... Uh, I mean, uh... <laughs> Yes, but you see, I just arrived in town, ma'am, and I'd like to see my sister. Your sister? Yes, ma'am, my sister. I just wanted to tell her I was in town. Oh, uh, who is your sister? Why, uh, Edna Stillwell. I, I, uh, Edna Stillwell. I'm her brother, Richard Stillwell. Well, Edna is your sister. Yes, ma'am. My, I'm sure glad to know you. Uh -oh. I'm sorry we haven't met before. Oh, well, thank you. May I ask who you are? I am Edna's mother. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, good night. Good night. And now, Bob Strong and the Avalon Orchestra in Bob's own arrangement of An Apple for the Teacher.
Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear what Chris Theopolis, the well-known Greek diplomat, said the first time he tried Avalon cigarettes? Well, he said, all the boys told me try Avalon's. That's for me, Joe. That's the best cigarette you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's absolutely right, too. Avalon's are the best cigarettes you can get it. <laughs> In fact, it's amazing that any cigarette with the superior quality of Avalon can be sold for three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Yes, that's what you get in union-made Avalon, highest quality cigarettes at a very worthwhile saving. So why not take advantage of it? And let me tell you, you'll like Avalon's smoother, milder taste and flavor, made possible by a super blend of the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos obtainable. Truly, you'd never guess Avalon's cost you less, three to five cents less per pack. Without a doubt, friends, they're the outstanding cigarette buy of today. So the next time, why don't you give Avalon's a trial? With pleasure, we present Kurt Massey and the Avalon Chorus. Kurt has chosen one of the most melodious of the trail songs for tonight. It's a lonely trail. Kurt, if you will, please. Standing at the crossroads, don't know where to travel. Roads of rock and gravel don't lead me anywhere. Just the smoothest highway somehow is my way and nobody seems to care it's a lonely trail when you're traveling all alone it's a lonely trail when you're just a rolling Like a ship without a port to call your own. It's a lonely trail when you haven't got a friend. And the road before you never seems to end. If I could only travel double, it's a lonely trail when you're traveling all alone. now it's time for the third trip in our Triple Alliance, the Send Out Skelton Service. Would you like the day off from your business or profession? Then give us a ring and we'll send out Skelton while you send out for some aspirin. We now take you to his office where Edna Stilwell is acting secretary and Skelton is acting screwy as usual. Hello, this is the Send Out Skelton Service. You take the trip, we'll send the drip. <laughs> What's that? You want to go out for the evening and you want Skelton to mind the baby? Okay, goodbye. Oh boy, another ju... Hey, you mean I got to look after one of those little pink things tied up in ribbons with no hair? <laughs> Don't look so scared. After all, you were a baby once yourself. How do you know? I mean, uh... And you were a lazy little baby, according to your mother. Uh, what do you mean I was a lazy baby? Well, she said you were even too lazy to shake your rattle. You just let it lay on your tummy and wait till you got hiccups. I did not. Well, a job's a job, so I'm off to bounce a baby. Here, here's the address. Yeah. And wait a minute. I want to pin these on your lapel. Oh, flowers? No, safety pins. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think I ought to take this. I'll put him to sleep With my fist I'll 
I'll give him a bob. <laughs> yep, I guess it's the house. Gee, it's all lit up. Kind of reminds me of my uncle. <laughs> well, here goes. Uh, is there a baby in the house? That's my business. Well, I've come to mind your business. <laughs> oh, you're a skeleton, huh? Well, yes. come right in. Uh, here's my baby boy. Gee, he's a cute little guy, isn't he? Looks just like you. You're looking at him upside down. <laughs> now, my wife thinks I'm minding the baby, but this is the night I play poker, see? And I'm in a hurry. The baby's bottle's in the ice box, and if he gets colic, give him Paragoric. Paragoric. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the Didy man will be around, too. And if he cries, <laughs> you'll figure out what to do. So long. Well, imagine me having to take care of a baby. Hello, little dribble push. Come on, let's get acquainted. Now, now, you don't want to be a crybaby and make keep people awake all night, do you? No. I wonder who that is. Oh, it's probably the Dighty Man. Come in. Why, well, are you the Dighty Man? Well, I ain't a three-card fast presser. Hercules, <laughs> the Dighty Man. Oh, goodness, yes, Mr. Skelton. I'm a D-man. <laughs> I'm an instructor, too. I go around teaching fathers all about what they call the infernal triangle. <laughs> you teach them? Oh, heavens, yes. After all, I know babies backwards. Yeah. <laughs> but what are you doing here, Mr. Skelton? Oh, I'm taking care of this baby. And he's as good as gold. <laughs> Wasn't he? Well, I gotta go now, Mr. Skelton. I'm working on a new invention, a dighty with a zipper. Yeah? And if it works, every father will be a quick change artist. Hey, well, wait a minute. I may need some help around here, Herky. Oh, now, quiet. La, 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 la. Let's see. I'll take this pin out over here. Take this one out over here. Well, uh, bless my event. He's cute. <laughs> here, hand me one of those, Herky. Or maybe you better put it on. Oh, goodness, Mr. Skelton. I can't help you. I see they don't use the triangle style. Yeah. You mean I got to do it myself? Yes. Square, huh? <laughs> Well, this one up here on the shirt. Yeah, here's one on the outside. Oh, gee, I stuck my finger. How'd that look, Herky? Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Skelton. But where are his legs? <laughs> that's funny. They were there a few minutes ago. <laughs> hey, maybe I should have folded it. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna try it again. That's a thing. Hey, maybe he's got colic. His old man said if he had he got colic to give him a pair of something. <laughs> oh, yeah, Gorix. He said if he got colic, to give him a pair of Goricks. A pair of Goricks? Why, I never heard of them. Well, when I got colic, Mom used to give me some brandy and a little warm water. She did? Look, I'll go see if I can find some brandy. See if you can amuse him, Herky. Maybe there's some out in the kitchen here. All right. Kitty, 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 baby. Oh, looky. See the funny old face Uncle Herky's made Oh, well, I know what'll stop you. Watch me while I stand on my head. Look, baby. Oh. oh! Oh, my goodness gracious. The china closet, the floor lamp, and the goldfish bowl. Well, at least it stopped him from crying. Now, I ain't gonna do that again. Wait, I'll sing something for you, baby. And for goodness sake, laugh when I sit down at the piano. Oh, 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 please obey me. <laughs> well, maybe I scared the poor thing to death. Good <laughs> heavens, Mr. Skelton. Just when I had him quiet. Oh, I tripped over the kitchen cabinet. <laughs> hey, I couldn't find any brandy. You think he could go for a little slug of gin? <laughs> well, I don't know. I suppose it ought to be all right. How much shall I give him? Well, let's see. I can't remember just what Mom gave me. It was either a teaspoonful mixed in with a glass of water or a spoonful of water mixed in with a glass of brandy. <laughs> 
Sounds more logical. It was a glass of brandy to a teaspoonful of water. Yes, I get that bit. I... Only we're going to have to use gin. Well, yeah. here's a glass of gin. We'll give him the water later for a chaser. <laughs> Oh, still, baby. Oh, look, look, look out, Mr. Skelton. He'll knock it out of your head. Oh, oh, gee, the rest of gin spilled, too. Gosh, all over me, you and the baby. Oh, my. Well, I guess maybe we better both sing to him. Hey, listen, my uncle used to sing a song, uh, put himself to sleep with it. Uh, uh, Sweet Adeline, I think oh. it was. Sweet Adeline? Well, uh, I know that song. You know, come on, let's sing it. Right. Sweet Adeline. Get you go, get you go, get you go. Sweet Adeline. Oh, thank Who's heaven. That? My baby. And what are you two doing in my house? Are you the baby's mother? Yes, I am. And what do you two mean by coming to my house and getting intoxicated? Oh, we just intoxicated. <laughs> Who, me? Us? Do you deny it? Empty gin bottle. You reeking with the smell of it. House wrecked and singing that awful song. Help! Now, wait a minute, lady. Take it easy. We've been drinking. Honest, we haven't. The baby knows we haven't. Hey, baby, tell your mom we didn't touch a drop. Go on, tell her we're only trying to keep you quiet, will you? Bless you, screwball. How do you expect me to talk and I'm only six months old? See? <laughs> Dell, a few more hunks of time, and the networks will be playing an identification tag. That's right, and we'll be it. <laughs> yeah, uh, say, Dell, I don't uh, like to bring this up, but uh, right. have you been going around saying that I'm uneducated? No, no, not at all, Red. I, I uh, merely said that your spelling is original. Oh, well, that's the... <laughs> oh, what's the use? Good night, folks. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Remember, friends... During the week when you ask for Avalon cigarettes... Don't forget your change. Oh, why not always travel on with Avalon? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents, plus city or state tax. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Skelton will appear at the Chicago Theater starting next Friday, along with John Bowles and Zazu Pitt. And Red will be back with us next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. Dell King speaking. Good night. <laughs> Oh,
Avalon Time has come to you from our Chicago studio. An apple for the teacher is from the production The Star Maker. This is the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York, 9 p.m., B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watch Time. From Johnny Davis. Johnny Davis. Thank you, Ed. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to be back on the air again with you. Boys, and I'd like to start off with an oldie, You Are Music. 